say here to meet some people in person, some are very well known, some others are new. So um, my presentation is uh, how to make the market and the research environment uh, where I live actually um, closer using uh, standards and also benchmarking tools. So my 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 main uh, line of, of work is about benchmarking. I mostly uh, talk about benchmarking, but also how benchmarking is related to standards and how this uh, collaboration can uh, uh, improve uh, new products, or, but also help researchers to make better 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 research. Um, I come from the uh, Spanish National Research Council, actually here in in uh, in, in Spain, in Madrid, and and we have been uh, a long collaboration with Technalia with uh, other projects in the, in the last ten years. Uh, okay, I will begin begin, begin with uh, with a uh, more snapshot of where we are in the robotics. There is, uh, I would say. Um, a revolution in robotics in the last uh, about 10 to 15 years. Uh, before robots were in these cages in industry where they were separated from humans because of safety reasons. And now uh, the contact between between the users and the robots are uh, uh, is, is higher and higher, uh, up to uh, some cases in which uh, there is a uh, close physical contact between human and, and robots, like in the case of wearable robots. Or, Sorry, Diego, we yeah. cannot see the slides that you are pressing in. in so, yeah. Why? But spritz on the first one, so sorry for that. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's only the first one on the screen. That's strange, no? Yeah, yeah, it is. How to go to the teams on this computer? Yeah. So. Let's try to share again. There's some yeah. delay, but. Yeah, we, we can see your desktop, not the. Let's try to do in a different way. Let's try to share the the try to share the, not the screen but the presentation. Let's try like this. That's a new way to move the camera. Nothing showing. But you can hear me, no? So people can yeah, hear me. Yeah, so, so the connection. Like the camera there, and they can see the, 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 ah, okay. the slides, okay? Okay. Sorry for this, but. No, no problem. Never after. Technology. We have COVID. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's so, so I see. Yeah. Oh, I try to communicate also with, with my sorry. voice. Sorry. <laughs> Should be understandable. Okay. So um, this is also witnessed by several uh, uh, forecasts in the market in which they say that this collaborative robot market is going to increase a lot in the line that happen in, in the future. But we clearly see how oh, this shift is, is, is taking place. Okay. So we have, uh, if we had and we still have uh, one main question, which is whether these robots really meet uh, human needs and expectations. Uh, what's the problem with this uh, new fancy technology that uh, most of the time when you want to see whether these are really working or not, you come out with a lot of um, marketing videos which are good to generate and say, awareness to more or less explain to the general public uh, the functionality of these robots. But uh, we are we're missing really quantitative indicators on the performance of these systems. No, if you go to buy a cell phone, you can see a lot of parameters, you know, which help you to, to buy one cell phone or the other one, and or or, or your or, or your uh, the fridge, you no, know, you have this uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, efficiency measurement for A to 
no letter, and so you can choose. No, when you come up and, and you want to, to buy a robot, also most most of these you cannot buy still, but they're starting to to be available in the market. No, so what sh should you look at? No, which are the indicators that that can convey the the, um, the level of performance of the system? So we, we think that this is completely missing, at least uh, when we started to propose this idea of this line of benchmarking, actually here with, with technology, the young management uh, was seven years ago, eight years ago, this was completely in, in, in not existing. Okay. But uh, there was a, a discipline or a field called benchmarking that is uh, well known in other disciplines, like for example, computer vision uh, or, or even uh, the, the communication, like um, uh, internet connection, no? there are see this um, uh, methodology that is used to uh, help uh, people assess the system in a quantitative way and also in an impartial way. No? From the outside, you can apply this independently of what the system is. No, you can apply this kind of of uh, measurement uh, methodologies. No? Uh, this is uh, very useful to compare. So benchmarking is mainly done to compare different systems. Many times, my system or my company with the with the with the competitor, no? but also from an end user point of view, also to choose different solution. All the engineers, this comparison can help in identifying where to put attention in in, in during the development. No? So because, as Patrick said before, uh, you. Don't have unlimited time, so you have to focus on something, and you can focus on. Okay, I want to improve uh, that specific um, uh, quantitative indicators of uh, no, one unit, no, and then I focus on that. And also, in the research is very important to demonstrate that your system um, uh, is working. That can you can bring your robot out of the lab. This is very well connected with the. Concept of, of technology readiness level. You all well know uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this, this methodology to measure um, where your um, prototype is uh, in the path from research to market. Okay, uh, this technology readiness level being introduced by NASA is, is NASA and uh, also. Uh, so benchmarks can provide you an indication of where your system is in this. No, so um, each of these number has a definition, but I like uh, to use the definition of Patrick. <laughs> I just put your photo here. Now you are in my presentation for the rest of the night. So I tried this. I think I don't know if this applies. Okay, this, because the definition of technology reasons level are different from what you present, but I think that there is some overlap. Or, the meaning is the same. So you can start with an idea, you do basic research on this, and then all the way you, you or your colleagues or, uh, or, or companies take this idea and try to you know, develop this un until this can be commercialized. No? So technology readiness level are very well suited for benchmarking, no? to, 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 so I have to consider that uh, they go together. So uh, let me explain a bit more uh, what methodology we choose to uh, approach this. So how can we can quantify the performance of this? So let's consider that you have your robotic system. So I focused in, of course, in robotics, but you can extend this concept to many other technologies. Um, this, I, I took this, uh, this, this taxonomies and these plots, I didn't invent it. I think that is from the multi-learning robot, robot mapping and robotics of so, uh, H2020. So let's consider you have a bunch of robotic technologies. Um, these are the building blocks of, uh, of the different parts of, of a robotic system. And then on the right, you have the, what we call the application domains. So these are Seven, the seven application domains proposed by by the the MAR. And our question is whether these robots are useful. How do they meet you know, the, the needs of these uh, application domains? So if you um, if your question is that it's a binary question, you want to just know whether 
or not peace uh, fill this uh, this need there are a lot of uh, already approaches that are mostly competition based approach what they do is to put several robots together like robcap or DAPA robots challenge and see whether these robots can solve problems no, or not most of the time these uh, competition are based on scores that are very simple no? you can do you cannot do how many goals you do how much time you 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 you're required to, to to finalize the task no but if your question is how really you want to know how the task has been achieved there is uh, an empty space so this is a video in which a famous video of the robot challenge in which the, the, the several robots tried to do many things and and, and this was uh, just to highlight the failures of these no? of course they succeeded in many other but they failed in some of them so all these systems had uh, let's say did not pass that that that, that task but uh, uh, if a researcher wants to know exactly what was wrong, it was difficult to have this on a quantitative. Fortunately, uh, the, the multi annual robotic roadmap in robotics uh, proposed tried to, to identify which were the what I call the, the building blocks of behavior, which are called system abilities. You no. Know? You can see there that it's concept adaptability, cognitive ability, configurability, decisional autonomy, dependability, interaction ability, manipulation ability, motion ability, and perception ability. Okay, so this cover more or less all all the behaviors that, that, that the robot could do, uh, but 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 identify and put an identity of each of the concepts. So why we think that this layer of system abilities is a perfect layer for us to try to quantify the, the behavioral system. Because if, it, if we can uh, measure one of the system abilities, uh, we can start to uh, answer two main uh, basic questions that are what, what is the cause effect relationship, for example, from a change in one part of my technology, for example, if I change my uh, perception system, so I put a LiDAR of a, or, or a camera to make my slam of my environment, no? uh, what of this system ability will be affected? It's not an easy question, no? because maybe uh, it's more adaptable to the environment, or maybe it's the, the, the motion is better. No? I don't know, but I can establish this correlation. Only if I can measure what adaptability is. No? And the second uh, cause effect cause relationship is if I improve uh, one of my system abilities, how the final, uh, I'll say, if I participate in a competition, would I score better or, or worse? M my, my end user would be happier or not. No? And so I can try to identify where my uh, research efforts or as a company, my, 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 my yeah, the money I, I pay in, in, in the development, where should I focus on? Because maybe I focus on something that's useless to the final uh, uh, goal. Okay, so every, everything uh, comes up that, to that if we um, are able to measure system abilities, we can try to help uh, identify and quantify um, the progresses that I'm making from my lab until the market. But the question is still the same. Can we quantify system abilities? And the answer is still, um, I would say, uh, close to no, but at least each, of, each, each developer, each researcher is trying to, to, to answer in, in a different way. So there is no standardized way to, to measure system abilities. This, for, of course. So in the project Eurobench, we tried to answer, uh, address this question focusing on bipedal robotic technologies that are three types. You can see there, uh, it's exoskeleton, humanoids, and also prosthesis um, technology. And also, we have also another, now we are participating in another European project called Natural Intelligence, in which we are addressing uh, quadrupedal locomotion. So still, really lagged, but uh, 
bit different. We try to make uh, the, the, the bridge between bipedal and quadruped locomotion. Okay? And what we identified uh, today, well, I, will, I, will, I will talk about three ingredients and seven principles. So uh, be prepared to this. <laughs> to this. So let's uh, identify which are the, uh, what we think are the most important ingredients for benchmarking. Okay. The first one is test beds. Test beds can be defined as environments that can replicate the, 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 the typical operative condition of, of a robot. No? For example, if I'm developing an exoskeleton, I want the exoskeleton to work in the, in the real environment, uh, I need some test bed to replicate ramps, stairs, uh, irregular terrains, unstable terrains, etc. Now, what I, I can find out there on in the home environment. The important part of this test, but also that this test bed should be if possible sensorized, okay? Because I can get data from this. I can analyze this data. And the second part is uh, actually uh, related to how should I um, perform the protocol and this is very close to standard so that I have to develop a kind of test method. You know? uh, if I want to test um, uh, the, the, the ability of an exoskeleton to climb stairs, I need to really uh, have a, a detailed protocol that, this, that everyone from here in Japan and the US make exactly the same because you want them to compare to be similar. Please. And of course also the metrics and the algorithms to calculate this metric from that. And the third part is data sets. No? Uh, why? Uh, maybe it's useless to say, to say, it's obvious that with data you can do comparison and uh, you can enable AI to, to, to make this comparison and this prediction. No? If uh, imagine in an ideal world in which we can quantify all the system abilities in a, in a, in a lot of, of technologies, Today, uh, a new developer can say, OK, uh, can you predict me uh, what kind of advancement uh, I can have in this domain and where should I focus my attention in the development process? If I have all this data during uh, 10 years or 20 years of several companies, several research groups, how they evolved, I may have this prediction. OK, but without data, I cannot do anything. So. Uh, Imagine that if we can take all these ingredients, put this into one benchmarking ecosystem. If I have this, I can on one side allow developers to demonstrate their robotic performance, go there with real, uh, not only marketing videos, but also with numbers. And on the other side, allow users to choose uh, the right robotic solution. And you go to the supermarket and you have to choose between different yogurts. So, Eurobench STH Hero is um, a cascade funding project. Is was because we are uh, very close to the end of the project. In June we will end up. And so what we did is to involve the community in the development of these uh, three ingredients. Okay. So what we did are two open calls. I'll talk more on. Uh, on the first call. I will not talk more uh, much about this scores but what we did is we offer funds for small consortium to help us developing one or more of these of, of this uh, ingredients and now or we the last years what we've done is to integrate these test bed protocols of data sets into two testing facility one here in madrid for for exoskeletons and wearable uh, robots in general and one for uh, uh, humanoids in Italy, and also one benchmarking software. And here we have uh, one of the, uh, the main promoters of this uh, in this room. Um, so these are some of the tests that have been developed by 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 the consortium, this external consortium, and some internally from our consortium. This is. Uh, the production of, of the the test uh, the, the, the the testing facility that we have in Madrid. I put here ROS because everything is connected through ROS. You know? So you wanted to because there are a lot of, of different test beds, a lot of different te te sensors. People that will uh, get into can have their own robot 
So they may have want to synchronize their own robot with all the sensors is in the facility. So we try, we thought that using ROS, which is standard, uh, becoming a standard, it's a de facto standard, uh, would be a, a good solution. Actually, I think it's only it's it, it, it's the first uh, uh, facility uh, based on ROS, and we are covering different kind of uh, what we call motor skills, which are basically the different uh, tasks. That we so, what's our main goal? Our main goal is to try to bring the real world scenarios into the lab. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, this implies amplification for what you can find out. Of course, you cannot replicate all the possibilities, no. But if you can get closer to that and standardize this this kind of test, we believe that we can uh, we can at least test something that is not just uh, walking on a straight line in the laboratory. Which normally uh, people are doing. Hmm? Uh, so what's the challenge? The challenge is making things so that this test, the experiments in the lab, reproducible and measurable. And uh, th what does this mean? And try to explain this with a very simple graphic. So uh, let's consider we have um, and the x-axis in which uh, we call it measurability now, which we define obtaining a quantitative and objective information on performance. No? And we can divide this axis into two main areas. So the qualitative approaches in which you are in a human observer that say, okay, you can do it, you cannot do it. No? And the quantitative approach with sensors in which you can uh, then analyze uh, a lot of, of, of quantitative information. No? And then we have another axis, uh, and we, we call it a reproducibility, which um, uh, we can define as allowing for comparable results with different teams and different experimental staffs. Okay, so for example, if I'm move, measuring my movement with um, an optoelectronic system with all these markers that made my movement, and then in another lab I'm using inertial sensors. I have different setups. Uh, the result that I obtain would they will be comparable or not? Because I'm not exactly measuring it exactly in the same way. No, we cannot ask for this rigidity. Otherwise, the la different labs in the world would not allow allow for comparability of result. No, so reproducibility is is a concept that is different from replicability. It's just a kind of terminology, no? but replicability says you have to do exactly the same. Okay. Reproducibility, you you are more flexible. Okay, okay. So we have four areas: um, marketing videos, demos are in this qualitative and non-reproducible um, sector. Scientific experiments. Uh, shouldn't be here, but they mostly are here in robotics because most of the time the paper is difficult to reproduce the results because you don't have the information. The system is a uh, very different system uh, to each other. Uh, but at least we have quantitative information most of the time. But each of the people use a different kind of metrics and very difficult to compare. Competition. The competition is very good because they are made to allow different systems stay in the same arena. So stay together, uh, they can uh, uh, repeat the experiments very many times, it's reproducible, but uh, most of the competition are uh, still very qualitative, no? not totally qualitative, but most of the time. So for us, for us benchmarking is here, we want to stay there, no? so having experiments that are both quantitative, but also reproducible. Some approaches, I, like the uh, European Robotics League, are trying to uh, to include more scores that are more quantitative, um, uh, in in order to have a, a, a more a richer um, comparison with, uh, among system. And so they are trying to move from that uh, sector to the to the to our ideal sector, and we are trying to do it from this other perspective. So we are. Most of us are researchers. We have some companies in the, in the project, but we are researchers. We're trying to, okay, what do we do? I'm doing an experiment. 
you are doing an experiment that actually we're doing the same thing, but in a different way, why don't you know, agree on a standard way to do it? No? So we are trying to make, I don't know if this is standard or not, but we think that this concept of benchmarking and standard are very close, very close to each other. And uh, the demonstration of this is that we try to, to develop a standard. So we, what we took is one of our test beds, this test bed that we call the regular terrain test bed, in which we designed a modular um, surface made in this case of 12 modules uh, that you can see. You can put this kind of Lego in which you can put a different uh, position and you can simulate a variety of different uh, uneven uh, uh, environment, of course, not all, 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 you cannot simulate everything, but you can simulate a, a several challenging uh, situation for robots. Okay, so what we, we did uh, also is to uh, develop then uh, another uh, concept that is uh, a multi-layer concept in which you have a basic layer, which is a base of support that you can incline. On top of this incline, incline surface, you can put these modules that can have different inclination. This is a five degree, but we have a 10 degree model. Okay, so you can really, I try to do this and it's not easy when you stay in, in a sloped configuration. And on top of this, you can have different layers of materials, you know, that could be soft material or rough, etc. No? So we think that with combination of these three types can uh, allow people to choose uh, what condition could be most similar to to what uh, uh, the operative uh, the, in the, the, the condition of the of the robot. No? And what we did, we uh, developed our first uh, we called pre-standard. It's a document that has been developed together with DIN, which is the standardization body in, in, in Germany, and with Senelec, which is the European ISO. Some of you know this uh, this work because participating in this in this effort, we did this with um, um, almost twenty different institutions. So this is a kind of fast track for 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 a standard. Uh, it's it, 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 it is a formal document. It cannot be called standard. Even sometimes you see now in the COVID thing. So this is standardized, and you see that it's not an ISO. It's CWA, no? so it's kind of okay. A first step, no. The good thing is that you can do this in six months instead of an, an international standard that requires years to 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 write. No? In the internet, this is the the, the, the name of the, the, the of, of the standard. Or well, basically, I, um, our goal is then to propose this standard to the. ISO, I'm a member of this uh, technical committee in robotics 299. So if I have time, <laughs> I would like to bring this into that uh, and uh, try to make it uh, approved as a standard. No? Uh, but I let's see how this process goes. Uh, this I also took uh, the, the image from Patrick uh, when Patrick was uh, I was uh, uh, trying to um, include some information. So. Uh, Standard is, is divided in different in different parts. One is the test bed, say, and I I think we are we are covering a minimum quality standard. So we can do that. It's not a crash test uh, standard, but it's a kind of, no, uh, to measure the quality of, of, of something. And then what we are proposing is different performance indicators and different metrics. I don't know if this metrics we are not uh, we are not proposing a new um, measurement unit. No, we still measure things in the international uh, uh, standard and uh, measurement standard. But what we are proposing is something that people can can start to use and to communicate to each other as as metrics of 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 performance. No, and there are many uh, works in the, in bipedal locomotion knows the the most of these. These are not new. I'm just taking from the literature and say, okay, we think these are the good ones. And also we identify which test condition you have to do this at the normal speed, a low speed, a high speed. Um, the all these configuration are coded. 
So if I'm doing a uh, walking on a 15 degree slope, I was here. No? If I do this, this string identify everything. No? So the number of subjects, the, the metric I'm using, so I'm measuring the, the step length. No? Uh, in configuration A at 15 degrees, no, uh, with the, with the layer of soft material, with this density of of, of softness, uh, with exoskeleton, uh, self selected six speed, uh, first repetition, and I'm focusing on the left leg. So you have everything there, and inside this file you have this performance indicator, no, in time, no, with these timestamps. So this is what we propose. Also, we propose some kind of results visualization, but just as a, a suggestion, no, you can uh, visualize as you, as you want. No? Okay, so what's our strategy? Our strategy is to take what we took is one condition, the regular theorem condition. We try to develop this pre standard in a time for six to 12 months, and then in two, three years, no, make this pre standard be accepted as international standard. And our strategy is to repeat this process with uh, all these uh, conditions that in which we think that we identify the good test method no? and repeat this. Make all, all we have in this testing facility as uh, now becoming to be standard. Uh, we think that this is relatively fast, but uh, achieve better consensus. Okay, so let's go for this, this uh, C seven key principle. Actually, we already presented four of them. So the first is that so these are the principles that we think um, uh, should be the basics uh, if you want to make benchmarking or you want to use. Uh, uh, mostly, you can uh, you want to um, develop a benchmarking ecosystem. You should uh, follow this to be really to, to achieve a good impact. So the first is reproducibility. So I already explained what reproducibility means. Um, this allow, I put this building on giant shoulders, uh, because if you can reproduce an experiment done by another people before you, you can advance no, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the knowledge. No? Parable, uh, this means that if I make a test in the lab, this should predict what my system will do out of the lab. So this is a question that actually we even we haven't answered yet. Uh, if I walk on this irregular terrain and then I go outside and, and see something that is different from my regular terrain, is there a correlation with this? It should be, otherwise these lab tests are only good for comparison if if but not a good prediction of real world condition. Standardizable meaning that this test method should be then Converted into standards to help companies um, reach real people needs. Is we don't want to just stay in the research environment. We want this to be used by companies, and companies will use only if they they are. I don't know what Patrick would say, but if they are forced to use because there is a normative that says you have to follow the standard. Otherwise, you cannot have the CE mark on this, for example. Uh, and now we get forward to the fourth one, which is uh, shareability, uh, and that that everything should be, all this computation, all this data should be open access, should be in platform that everybody can use. And this is not uh, an easy task. There are a lot of database out there, but each database has this different format. Who is going to compare all these things? You need a guy for, for, for six months, one year, trying to adapt to different formats, and at the end you will not do if you don't have a one, one fee, one, one, one place to do this. And that's what we are trying to do in the, in the Eurobench, develop this benchmarking software. Uh, so this benchmarking software, basically what it's doing is, consider that you want to test something on your robot, so you want to test uh, uh, how good is your robot to work on slopes. Okay, so you are you stay there in standing point, no? So you go into a web-based software that helps you to identify which protocols you can apply. There could be one protocol in slope working or several, no? Depending on the kind of slopes, no? You select that. You can also 
uh, we are putting all this description in GitHub so people can also look at this without entering uh, proprietary software. No, you can look at that. Then you do the experiment. You can do the experiment in your own lab or you go to the facility you know, that allows you with uh, this raw space architecture to have everything synchronized. You know? And then you obtain the data. This data will be uploaded in the repository and then there is a performance indicator computation that is basically the software that takes all these algorithms for computation and put this into one software system that is able to return some scores on the performance of that robot. This should be done semi or totally automatically uh, because you follow exactly the protocol and you follow exactly the data format that you have to upload. So everything can be done by machine, so without a human intervention. And then you obtain this data, and uh, this is kind of future work. No, we would like to apply artificial intelligence once we have enough data to make a meaningful comparison and prediction. Okay, uh, this actually is being done by uh, with, uh, with, uh, with coordinated by technology. Which are the main points here? That should be full cloud based. Agnostic to code environment, that's why we have uh, uh, Docker, because um, uh, we are not forcing people to implement this in MATLAB and C++. So we are, uh, this is a community approach in which people, developers can, can propose their own metric or propose their own algorithms in the code they, they prefer in Python or whatever. And this should still work because everything is in these containers, no? in which the code and the uh, and the libraries are self-contained and uh, they work. No? Um, standardized format for the data, that's a really important part. And also, not only you standardized format, also we are trying to have this hub of data in the same place no? to cover this comparison. Okay, let's go for the fifth principle, which is agreement with the community. Okay, uh, with the users, that is, if also with the ones that uh, should then you uh, take these test methods and accept this as as normative reference that are policy makers. No? We are working also in this direction with the second call of Eurobench. Uh, what we did last year is to once we had everything integrated with offering what we had, so the testing facility and the software to uh, beta tester basically that we are we are inviting them to use what we develop to have an opinion from them and what we did is to select 42 different consortia uh, from 13 countries these are mean uh, more than 50 entities uh, that's mean a, a, a good uh, a, a good um, uh, community of, of, uh, of end users of early adopter, as you want to uh, call them. Uh, most of them, so more than half of them will use the, the facilities. So we go, uh, most of them are already done. Uh, they came in our facilities to test uh, their robot in our facilities, but others prefer to stay in their own lab and just using the algorithms and the metrics and the protocols to see us whether uh, you can do this in your own lab or you have each time to go to the facility. Um, this is just an example of, of the systems that uh, went to our facility. Uh, most of them are wearable robots. Some of them are, uh, are humanoid robots. In this uh, red uh, uh, circle, we have what we as consortium Everywhere console have offered a standard platform. Okay, these are the RIMC from uh, from Par Robotics from Francesco. They can mm -hmm. I'm sure it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, listen to us. And and that one is H3. Both of these platforms are are uh, the control and the communication space in ROS also. So this means that when this robot enters the facility, they are connected to this facility. Okay, so people can really have a direct communication and this will help people. And also this allows people that don't have robots, 
but all nodes are only they are only in uh, developing control algorithm to implement their own algorithm into this standard platform so you can compare not the robot itself but the control algorithm so this open up the possibility to also all the community of controllers and, 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 and people that do uh, code no? uh, and not only um, hardware okay so uh, of course we are targeting also um, the market as um, benchmarking ecosystem as testing facility so we would like to offer in the future what we have also to uh, as a service to the community uh, as a with our business model when we identify uh, some potential users huh, who can benefit from these uh, from these tools you know uh, one of these is our research group that we offer on only one side to 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 test new hypotheses, new approaches, uh, most focus on wearable robots, but it's completely joyful for humanoid. Also, we offer this to end the user. So you want to buy a system, but you have, you want to train uh, your personal to use this. Now, for example, you are in hospital, you want to buy 10 exoskeleton, so, so patient can use this. So you, you bring their physiotherapist, um, medical professionals to, to, to learn how to use the system. Could be university because we have a complete laboratory. So you can bring them students, you can do courses to help them, teach them to use a high variety of uh, technologies, no? robotic technologies, imagine the technology. The certification standardization body, was I was discussing before with Patrick, um, like to be um, a certified laboratory. You know? so people, companies, uh, before going with the final product can go uh, in our site and have a kind of quality seal of different performance levels you know, and, and, go, and, go, and go home. And then uh, also European project and competitions uh, which can instead how to demonstrate that their new system is working, they can uh, collaborate with us and bring their robot to the facility and, and use this uh, uh, facility to, to demonstrate you know, the ability of the system. Um, what are we doing on the side of policy makers? We are doing several actions also, apart from developing this CWA. We are also involved in another one that is the post cover project. It's about cobalt uh, safety. Uh, and now we, uh, I uh, highlighted in red uh, the main key point now, which is uh, the safety versus performance, because most of the time, when you talk about standards in robotics, it's standard about safety. <coughs> Why? Because, because safety is the main concern of any uh, system and robotic system above all. And so why testing performance? No? So why testing performance? Uh, some of you know, or maybe most of you don't know, that uh, the machinery uh, uh, regulation directive will change no, in uh, I don't know if it already changed or is, is changing. No, but before, uh, from 2006, there was this machine directive that uh, uh, considered this uh, the the system uh, mostly hardware system. But now uh, the new machinery directive is uh, is, is being uh, more uh, inclusive, meaning that they are including also the software in the system and also. The substantial modifications. No, what's the problem there? Before you were developing a hardware, and this hardware was that hour for the entire life cycle of the of that hardware. If you are trying, starting to put software that is more and more intelligent, meaning that is able to change itself and learn, and the behavior of the system will change. Based on the experience, it means that during the life cycle of, the, of that product, the ability of this product can change, and also the safety, the safety, the, 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 the um, uh, I would say uh, about about safety, the system can be less or more safe, you know, depending on the situation and the environment. So this means there is a big problem here, is uh, 
uh, for a product developer who, who, who how do you who is liable uh, for a system that is self -lear learning uh, during the life cycle no so that's a big discussion a big problem no and uh, that's why we think that uh, that performance is important to test uh, because Before safety was, if I put a finger and can I take this or like an um, electric station, something like this. But now is, for example, a system like a bipedal system. Uh, if uh, it's not able to to walk stair, this is not just performance because then I can fall in the stairs, and this becomes safety concern. So sometimes performance is related to safety. Of course, a good example is exoskeleton because exoskeleton. It's a symbiotic entity. There are functional aspects like all this uh, that I talked before, how good I can move in my environment. But also exoskeleton are, is, is so a human exoskeleton, two different entities. No? And there is an interaction between the two. There's physical, cognitive interaction, and so there are safety concerns intrinsic in this system. Also, there are other aspects like physiological, psychological, and satisfaction, human factors, a lot of things there, okay, between the interaction between human and the, and the machine. So we have these two fields that one is functional, so how good is myself with the robot can move in the environment, and the other one is how I'm interacting with this robot. And there is a cause effect relationship because good interaction probably will result in good function, and, 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 and if the robot works well, also have a better interaction, a better let's say uh, effects on my on my health and so on. So form and safety are very uh, um, um, connected to each other. Okay. But no one, at least in our field, is regulating this. So we are trying to see which perform aspects are more um, safety sensitive, say no. Okay. For for the last two, I don't know how much time I have. Five minutes. Yeah? Five <laughs> minutes. Okay. The the sixth point, uh, principle is transferability. Uh, that is what I developed here in in the bipedal locomotion, bipedal robotic. Can I ex extend ex uh, this to other fields? No. I think that uh, having this transferability is it's uh, it's a key point for benchmarking to be used. Otherwise, I when I when I go in another field, I have to start again from zero, and this will stop this. Uh, and uh, what we we are doing now, you can see this is this uh, platform that uh, I commented you, and we are using this with a quadrupedal robot. Okay, so what we put here, for example, is maximum inclination. This module put at V configuration, and on top of this we put the grass. No? And this we we and we try different the combination of this. And we're trying to develop to follow the same methodology. No, and of course the performance indicator will be slightly different, but not all. And now what we are trying to do is to do all these conditions with humans and see whether humans are comparable with the quadruple. In what terms? No, we can use a human reference to see how good a quadrupedal robot is. And we try to do this uh, replicating the four different environments. Uh, okay, but this, this is another project. So basically, what we are doing is to <clears throat> take this uh, natural condition, try to this uh, make this in the lab, use this condition to test our system in a different condition, and then there is the the, the the next step that is to after this then deploy the system into the nature and see whether there's a correlation between what we measure in the lab and what we measure in the in the in the in the, in the in nature. No? Uh, next step would be maybe to extend these also to other kind of technologies, not legged robots, maybe wheeled robots or aerial robots. How different are these? Of course completely different, but maybe not so different. Maybe the structure of the software will be exactly the same. No? We don't know. And the last is uh, understandable. So I put as a, this was at the beginning was the first one, and now I put as the last one because the story was better. But I, I think that this 
should englobe everything. Also, the terminology, as Patrick also said before, uh, it's really important. For example, for us that work with uh, healthcare robotics, you know, um, you, you have to talk with uh, with uh, cl clinicians, with physiotherapists, and, and many times you you end up with you don't understand each other just for problem of terminology. You know, for example, I always say the same the same um, uh, the, the, the same anecdote, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, when I was talking with a clinician and I was saying that. Uh, and the therapy was active one, no, and say no, but this is passive, active, passive, active, because I was considering active uh, from the robot perspective, and he was considering this from the user perspective. So when they say this is a passive therapy, or passive thing, was meaning that the, that the subject is passive and the robot is completely active. For us, a passive thing is like uh, that there is no actuation system. So, but this after two hours of discussion, no, it's a simple thing, no. Uh, so what we are doing now, uh, uh, actually, we started before COVID, and then uh, we're trying to follow up with the cost action, is to do this project, which is a vocabulary project that is uh, a joint action between cost and the euro bench. We identify several terms and what we are doing is to make a vocabulary action in the term, the proposed definition, discussion thing, discussion notes about this definition, related terms, as references. This is to be in a kind of open document, live document that we shared with the community, um, uh, trying to then look in a place to put this also, maybe also in the platform we are developing, so people can vote, use, discuss, uh, in kind, as we do in social networks. Okay, so um, these are basically the principles, open to discussion about this, whether these are good, bad, what's the link with standards, and uh, that's all for for improving this and bringing benchmarking into the practice of researchers and, and hopefully also in the companies. Thank you. No, uh, probably we will last you the slides afterwards, sure, the same sure. with the, the people online because no it was a bit difficult to see through the yeah, media. Yeah. Sorry for that. No, no, no problem. Uh, we can share all the presentations also and, and the videos on the course of the uh, We don't have any question online. I don't know if someone wants to comment or. <laughs> that was a great presentation, thank you. Um, at the beginning, I was meant to try to build a bridge to the end user, the very, very end user. Um, but if, if I got it right on the, on the walking, I mean, the, the walking bipedal path has several application areas already within it. Yeah. Uh, and when you drew your circle, you were doing walking and, and pushing and so on, the many capabilities. Could you say a little bit more about where you see that going as a patient or a particular task in it? Some going all the way to the very, very end. Someone who says, right, I'm going to buy this one tomorrow for these reasons. Yeah. Yes, uh, you touched a very sensitive point because in uh, about to we talk about exoskeleton, which like uh, patient are uh, most common to have. Uh, exoskeleton for rehabilitation are kind of of uh, uh, it's, it's the therapeutic approach. You know? so what we are measuring and so far is not the therapeutic approach. We are testing the assistive approach, meaning that uh, it's like a wheelchair. No, I want to know whether with this wheelchair you can go around. I'm not testing whether this wheelchair will make you healthier or not in the future. OK. Um, if you consider the exoskeleton a therapeutic treatment, so meaning that you go to the hospital, you do a um, uh, number of sessions with that robot, and then you go out and you are, you are better without exoskeleton, then you have to enter into totally different field, which is uh, clinical trials, for example. Which are not totally different from these, uh, but actually, uh, I'm not an expert on clinical trial, but what you are measuring is the effect of the, on the health, uh, on the healthiness of the, of the, uh, of the person. 
So there are indicators. Also in that case, we are working in, in uh, trying to bring in this benchmarking into the clinical field. Okay, so excluding technology, so considering only the patient as a bipedal system, you do tests, you obtain metrics, and with these metrics you see whether you are improving or not. Okay, uh, what's the problem with this? This is what normally uh, clinicians do. The problem with clinicians is that they use a really rough scales, you no, know, in which there is no, it's more so that the measurability axis is more towards the qualitative one than the, the quantitative one. Okay, so we are mesh, we, we are using the same techniques to see, okay, try to really evaluate in a more quantitative way. You know? So we are helping that direction. But I'll say, uh, I don't think that uh, walking on stairs or walking on irregular terrain would affect uh, the way, um, as a medical device, this is, is uh, evaluated. You know? So for patient is this, it's if a patient is a, a person that needs um, help, as like a tetraplegic patient, then I, I think that we are going in the, in, the, in the good direction. I don't know how close to the final market. I don't know. I got a bit lost there. That's why I need some help and advice from people that are in the industry and they should tell us, yes, I need this or oh, it's useless. Why are you doing this? If I go and I sell, I don't need any of this to sell. To discuss about this, yeah, what do you, you think? <laughs> okay. Short question, otherwise we also have another session this afternoon to have open discussion. I agree that the safety is very important for exoskeletal. So for, for the humanoid, what kind of the safety are you are the checking or considering? That's a good question from Francesco. <laughs> to, to know whether Francesco really needs uh, what kind of safety. I think now the safety that the uh, tests that they are doing a safety about uh, this you no know, electromagnetic compatibility ah, okay, okay. and uh, physical you know. like this. But in the future, when the RIMC will have a super intelligent system that is able to decide things, I don't know how they will be able to test. This is a safe system, a safe intelligent system. So that's a, that's a good question. But I actually, I think it's it's relevant. But I think that demonstrated that uh, that, that robot can climb stay without uh, uh, falling and and kill the the, the human con the human that is behind. So it's it's relevant. I don't know if it's normal it requires this. Francesco wants also to answer. I think so. Francesco, I, I will. I mentioned give too many the times. words. <laughs> Francesco, I think that you can unmute yourself. Okay, so I can unmute, you can also see me, I don't know, probably, yes, okay. So thank you, Diego, for mentioning me a lot of time. <laughs> but uh, about the... Again, I mean, again, sorry, sorry. Can you repeat? Because we couldn't hear you here, sorry. Ah, okay, now you can listen to me? Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you, Diego, to mention me a lot of times. <laughs> but uh, yes, the... The question with humanoids in the in the in crowded environment in the normal uh, life is something that is still uh, under development. So, in the in the presentation that I will do in, uh, in some minutes, probably you will see some of these challenges because not everything is already solved. But uh, I was very interested in your presentation about the miscommunication with the real actual using the the use cases. So you, you already mentioned one of your, uh, you know, <laughs> example, but uh, what in your opinion uh, could be the miscommunication, uh, not only with the people that have to use, you know, the robots, but uh, also with the um, local central politician that in my opinion, there's also some <laughs> misunderstanding there in order of the use of this, of this robotics. Yes, I, 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 I totally, I totally agree. 
uh, I actually don't know what the miscommunication is because I, um, I I almost never talk with the with uh, with politicians and the people that at, at that at least technically you present this and say okay fantastic, but then uh, never had a real meeting or focus group with them. So it would be nice to see where you. Um, uh, what respect you find the uh, miscommunication. No? I try to see whether uh, also in the vocabulary project we have, we should include terms that are at that level. No? So I'm, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I'm giving the question back to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's a tough question but, also. Uh, yeah, also but, because politicians yeah. change every five years, so, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no, you have to restart from scratch all the time. <laughs> But maybe what we can do is to, with this vocabulary efforts, say, okay, um, uh, we are talking with, so in these terms, no? So maybe also because they don't know actually our field and then we should communicate them, uh, introduce them what this is, no? Otherwise there is always this AI, uh, they still job or they, what's liable for, for a dumbing card that is killing people, no? That's... Yes, you're right. Thank you, Diego. Thank you. Okay, so I think that we are done. I don't know if someone has something to say. Okay, yeah, we have a, a coffee break right now. So.